Hey everybody, it's that time of week again. Time for My Green Pets. I'm William Green, and today is March 18th, 2017. We're going to have just a quick look around today. Um, got a few things going on, a lot of new growth happening. And at the end of the video, I will show you the plant that is currently up for auction on eBay. This is my first uh, auction of a plant. As you guys know, this plant, this channel is not monetized, there's no commercials, there's no ads. So, this is just one way for me to earn a little bit of. Uh, money for this channel and hopefully these orchids can start to pay for themselves not that they cost that much to maintain but still there is some cost involved so let's have a look around and see what's going on let's start out with Brassia new start this is the next plant to uh, that's going to bloom and it is just really looking nice there are four spikes on it and you can see there's one down there, kind of a smaller one. And then there's one down here in the shadows. Um, but the largest spike is this one here. And just look at this guy. He just keeps going. I've had to move him down. Um, he was hanging up, and I had to move this plant down, down, down until it's sitting back on the table again because this spike just keeps getting longer and longer. It looks like I've counted somewhere around 16, 17 buds on it. So this one's going to be amazing. I kind of I'm wondering what the other spikes are going to do. They they might not be, well, I don't I don't think they're going to be nearly as big. They just seem to be growing slower and heck, they might not even bloom at all. Right next to the Brassia, we have the Maxillariella tenuifolia, the Max 10 coconut orchid. And over the course of the winter, it's put on lots of new bulbs. For example, this one here. And I really haven't, I really don't ever talk about it. It's, it's just kind of there. It just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And this year, it looks like, well, if all these uh, new bulbs bloom, it's going to be a really nice show. Usually, the flowers are way down in the plant, but on these new bulbs, the flowers will be higher up. So that will be a nice show and last year it bloomed in in June so I guess I'll be looking for that to be showing some buds in the next couple months these are some of my Cattleya Rex babies these are the largest ones and uh, they are all putting out new growth and I just think it's so amazing that they all know to put out new growth at the same time some of them start a little bit earlier than others, but for the most part, you know, all around the same time, they all started up, started putting out new growth. Here's one that's mounted. I'm going to see if I can pick it up and not tear anything up. Oh, no, I'm not even going to try. It's got roots going everywhere. I don't know if you can see down in this little tunnel there. Not really. But this one is the largest mounted seedling that I have, and only the second of two plants that I have mounted um, because these like their roots to dry out pretty quickly after being watered so I try to keep them on the dry side and during the w winter they really really you really have to watch it you can see these black black spots on some of the leaves this one here too these plants are so susceptible to rot during the winter if you water them or if they're too cool uh, and it's you know, they're not getting enough air they will start to rot and I've had that on even the mounted plant here had a place where it started to rot over the winter so you gotta be really really careful with them in the winter but now that period that rest period is over and they are starting to grow not sure when to expe uh, expect blooms on these plants but I think that they probably got a couple more years to go at least These are the smaller Cattleya Rex seedlings, but they all have new growth on them as well. 
in the foreground there you can see a Misiela Monticola he bloomed for us in the winter and it has got new roots and something else I wanted to show you let's have a look a closer look so yeah new leaf coming out new roots new roots new roots but look over here look at this look at that is that what I think it is could that be another spike poking out that would be cool right there well we're gonna keep an eye on that as you guys know the last spike took forever to develop and bloom it started growing like in end of August and finally bloomed in December so <laughs> it's gonna be a while but anyway I'm, I'm, I'm happy that the plant seems to be doing okay this is Bulbophyllum antiniferum. I just got this one just a few months ago from a friend down in Tennessee. And it has got a bud, or not a bud, but a spike pushing out, sorry, of one of those pseudobulbs. So it's going to be blooming soon as well. That's great. Most of my bulbos are seasonal bloomers. They only bloom one time of year, usually in the fall. But this one, this one seems to be the type that blooms whenever it feels like it. Those are always welcome in my collection. Here's Phalaenopsis sogo gotris. This is the whole plant. You can see the one spike growing out towards the light and one spike growing towards the wall. The walls have got um, white styrofoam lining them, white styrofoam, so the light reflecting off of the wall actually attracts the spikes and some growth as well. So it's it's good that the walls are doing what they're supposed to be doing, which is uh, reflecting light. But that's just, it's just a charming little, little plant. It only cost me 50 cents uh, a couple years ago, kind of on the discount rack at the big box store. But now it's got uh, two plants. It's had a little keiki that grew up and, and now it's blooming too. So I like these types that uh, form uh, little baby plants that come up off them and and uh, maybe in a few years we'll, this thing will really be an impressive specimen. This is Cygnotus Wine Delight. You guys saw it bloom in the fall and we've been tracking its new growth since it started pushing that out and we've especially been looking at the roots and, and asking the question when is it okay to start watering a catacetum type orchid that is coming out of dormancy. And I told you last week, I did soak the um, bottom half of the pot in a bowl of water for about five minutes or so and let it soak up some water. And it really, really did uh, soak it up and the pseudobulb swelled. But now you can see that the pseudobulb is, uh, it's dried up again. You can see that, that now there's, there's little, there's space between the little dead leaves on there that used to be tightly wrapped so it's already started to shrink but it keeps putting out new roots so I think what I'm going to do is I might do the soaking the the light soaking from the bottom again this week sometime but I am still going to be pretty sparing with the water until those latest roots are a little bit longer um, I'm not worried, I'm not too worried about damaging them at this point. It seems to have quite a few roots, um, especially above and below the plant, but um, I don't know, I'm just going to, I'm just kind of experimenting, you know, just kind of see what what this plant can, can take. But just looking at the plant itself, isn't it just gorgeous? Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it wonderful? And isn't it just like an allegory of life and death? You've got this old dried husk. I mean, of course, we know it's not dead. It's got plenty of life in it, but it just looks, you know, it does, doesn't look alive. You know, it looks dead. But then you have springing forth from it, you've got this just beautiful growth coming up with all this potential. You know that this is going to become a big growth with lots of leaves and these roots are going to be soaking up lots of water and fertilizer over the course of the summer and, and hopefully in the fall it will give us a really nice big show but I've enjoyed just watching this grow that's 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 thing that's something that orchid growing does for me that I you know it's not just the flowers but the plants themselves are so fascinating with the way that they grow and 
the um, formation of a new leaf or, an, or a new root is, you know, that's it's sometimes as exciting as the finding a bud spike. A bud spike, what is that? You know what I mean. Okay, let's talk about this eBay auction that is going on right now. So last week I kind of polled you guys to see if there would be any interest in a division of this plant. This is Mormodia Jumbo World. And the tag from it says, on the bottom, it says SVO. And I do believe, I got this plant as a gift from a grower who, I believe she bought several seedlings from Sunset Valley Orchids a few years ago. And this is one of the seedlings that she got. And uh, it grew well for her, but she didn't like the color of the flowers, so she gave it to me. And then I bloomed it out last year, and you guys saw what those looked, well, I bloomed it out a couple times, and then you saw what it looked like this past year with those lime green flowers, dark red speckles, and I took off half of the plant. So here is the division. Here it is. Look at this. So it is this smaller bulb here. This is the original division that I was given. So since I've had it, it's put on this one and this one, and then this is the newest growth and you can see it's got some roots on it pu pushing out one two three four one looks a little bit damaged there but there are plenty of roots coming and hopefully in not too long this little growth will look like the Cyclonus wine delight and it'll grow up into something like this right so it's still kind of just barely coming out of dormancy but it's four bulbs I was looking around on eBay and a lot of the uh, catacetum type orchids that are offered, there's only two bulbs. And I guess I could split it into two sets of two, but I figure, why not? I, why not just put this one up? Um, if you are interested, I will post the link to the auction. And I would also like to extend special thanks to the Sunroom Plant and Aquatics, a company that has decided or has... Uh, graciously listed the uh, this division on their uh, eBay page so feel free to check them out and yes the auction for this plant ends Wednesday at I believe 2 12 p.m. Central Time that's Chicago time and unfortunately will only ship within continental US I do not have phytosanitary certificates to send this anywhere else so if you're interested here it is before we go, I just wanted to show you a couple plants that I have up here in my, I guess it's like a little sunroom. This room is not heated very well, and so I don't keep anything in here that can't take some pretty chilly temperatures in the winter time. You might recognize these Vandas from the Vanda tree. They were hanging in the tree last summer. Um, this is my Clivia that has bloomed. I'm very happy about that. It uh, bloomed last year and it's the cover of one of my videos if you want to go back and have a look at that. It didn't have quite as many flowers as it did last June but hey I'm not complaining they're pretty. And um, oh this the pineapple. I've had this pineapple I cut the top off of a pineapple fruit about three years ago and I've been patiently waiting for it to do something. It's just gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. But look, 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 look. Can you see? Look in there. Look. It's got a little pineapple pushing out the top. So I'm assuming that's just going to keep growing up. And in a few months, I'm going to have a full-size pineapple. Maybe not as big as the ones you buy in the grocery store because this is kind of a small plant, but it is going to produce a pineapple. That is super exciting, so I can't wait to share that with you. Well guys, that's it for My Green Pets this week. I hope you've enjoyed the updates, and I look forward to sharing more with you as this springtime gets underway and these orchids start doing some beautiful things. Looking forward to some very interesting blooms this year. So, until next time, I'm William Green. These are My Green Pets. We'll see you next time. Have a great week.